Uh, hey everyone, it's Brian, the host of the Civil English 102 Big Idea Show. This is the video series where I spend a little bit of time talking about our reading assignments before you get to, you know, the reading. It's kind of a preview kind of thing. I call it the Big Idea, and my book just fell apart. That's great. <laughs> I have to tape that back in. So, the first question that comes up when I open up the reading on page three that is now falling apart, it basically says, why read? And that's a really good question. Your response probably is, well, Brian, um, it's required and I have to take this course. So yeah, I got to read to be able to get through this. And I know that's fine. And I totally appreciate the answer. But my guess is, you maybe read books every once in a while or other kinds of texts every once in a while as a way to, uh, as it says here, you may find some personal meaning within this process. And by the way, if you catch me looking down every once in a while, it's only because I have a script right here. Uh, that's me flipping the script. So every once in a while, I'll be doing that. It also says here uh, on page three that we read uh, to make ourselves, uh, page three, more human and feel more humane about the world. Now, as I'm looking around in my little area here, I got a little bookcase back here, and it's really helped me make sense of the world in a lot of different ways. In many ways, I have felt more connected. I think that's the reason why a lot of us read. We wanna feel more connected to the world. Uh, one of the books I have back here in my, uh, in my bookcase is called uh, How Soccer Explains the World, and uh, the subtitle is an unlikely theory of globalization. And basically it's sets of essays um, about how soccer explains a lot of the world's issues like the hooligan problem, uh, the survival of the top hats, the new oligarchs, uh, religious questions. It's super interesting and super detailed. And for me, it really makes a lot of sense to read a book like this because I love soccer and I wanna know the history of this game that's, you know, really old, a lot older than it seems uh, a lot of American sports are. But this is nonfiction. But there are some other books here uh, within my bookcase too that I, I really love. And um, one of them here is uh, Ralph Ellison's The Invisible Man, uh, Considering the World We Live In Now. Um, you should totally read this book. It's, it's an amazing piece of literature. Um, and other things here, I read and go back to over and over again as a way to help myself make sense of the world. Uh, a lot of us may also read just for fun, one of my favorite fun books, uh, The Martian. The Martian by Andy Weir. Um, great movie too, totally loved it uh, as a way to, you know, get that whole sci-fi thing on. Um, I also have um, a great love of poetry. Many people kind of think that might be a little bit weird. I'm going back to my bookcase now. Uh, but the truth is there are some amazing poets out there and we're gonna look at a few of them this term. Uh, this is Mary Oliver, um, great nature poet, love her stuff. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff. So that's part of where we are too. Uh, poetry and also drama when we get to it a little bit later on. Now as a part of uh, this big idea stuff, um, when we go through bits of the text, I'm really not gonna talk about the readings that much. Uh, I'm going to leave that to you so you can sort out the details for those particular things in the discussion boards and journals uh, a little bit later on. Uh, but for the most part, if there's like theory stuff, that's what I'm going to be talking about talking about in the big idea parts. So yeah, thanks book for falling apart. Um, let me see. So over on page seven, uh, one of the big one of the other big questions is this. Uh, it says, what is reading? And we we, we tried to answer the question, why do we read? Now the question is, what is reading? And there's a sub-question there that says, what actually happens when we read? And um, one of the more important definitions, I think, that I wanna put down here, and this will be one of the last things I say about this, is we do reading as a sense-making activity. It is an interactive encounter between a, an author, a work, and a reader within a cultural context. So you have to think about uh, where you are in the world and everything that's going on around you. And right now, man, there's sure a whole lot going on. And so it is totally fine to bring your experiences and what you know about the world into your interpretation of a text. And we're gonna talk about how that works this term. Uh, I just looked down at my script again, sorry. Uh, <laughs> it talks also here about reading holistically, and that just means it's kind of connected to what I just mentioned earlier about having an understanding based on what you know of the world. And then 
I think the one thing I want to end with is this business of under the checklist on active reading where it says interrogate the text. And people might be wondering what that means. Uh, so it says interrogate the text. Ask questions as you read, such as why some things are omitted, why other things are included, why a certain approach or technique was used, what the difference looking at things from another perspective might make. And it's this great idea of asking questions about a thing that you read that I I think about in terms of the soccer world as well. And I read a lot in this book called um, uh, The Beautiful Game uh, about uh, a journey through Latin American football. And what I learned in this particular thing is the idea of asking questions is like soccer announcers use it all the time to say, oh, the offensive team is asking questions of the defense. So we ask questions of the text as well. We sort of probe with our questions as a way to say, why did this happen? Why did this not happen? What does the author mean by this? What do they mean by that? And usually when you do this, I'm off camera, sorry. When you do this, the questions that you ask could probably be based on the highlights that you're putting in the text. So make sure you're highlighting stuff and then writing stuff in the margin that you can talk about a little bit later on when we get to discussion boards and journals. So that's all I have for this week's big idea uh, video. Uh, thanks for watching and putting up with my little, my little basement show here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Uh, peace out. Peace.